Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Lorena Moramari. We have the pleasure to interview the composer Robert Xavier Rodriguez. Here, here in Cincinnati, we're, the, we're excited because he composed the music for the opera Frida and is here presented by Cincinnati Opera, yes. but it's sold out. So that's a wonderful news. It is wonderful news. Yes. So let's talk about a little bit about your beginnings and um, how it started your passion for music. I was born in San Antonio, and in those days, when I was young, there were very few opera companies in the United States. Uh, San Antonio was one of the few, so we had a wonderful opera company in which all the great artists came. And I went to my first opera at six, and was, was, was an opera fan ever since. Um, I've written eight operas, and uh, if I could write only opera, uh, only operas, I would be happy. Some people have a, a bumper sticker on their car that says, I'd rather be sailing. I would, <laughs> I, I, if I had a bumper sticker, it would say, I would rather be writing operas. <laughs> and uh, the story of Frida Kahlo is, was an opera waiting to happen. Yes. Uh, the, these bigger than life characters, uh, Mark Twain said that uh, fiction is governed by the laws of probability but art is not. Uh, you couldn't make up a story like the, uh, the characters of Frida and Diego interacting with such big figures as uh, Nelson Rockefeller and uh, Trotsky. Uh, these situations, the horrible accidents she had. Uh, all this was the, the stuff of drama. Uh, what I found the most exciting part of the drama is the fact that even though Frida suffered so much, she didn't just sit and whine about it. Mm -hmm. She put the pain into her art and made something constructive about it. So I wanted to show her in the opera, not just as a victim, but as a fighter, someone who, who would look at death in the eye and say, I'm going to live. How do you show the complexity of her womanhood and her feminism throughout the music? That's a good question. I want the interesting thing about Frida is that she's very smart and she has a sense of humor. Uh, in opera, operatic heroines aren't usually very smart, <laughs> and they almost never have a sense of humor. They're always under the the influence of some passion or fate or something, and, and they don't think about things. Frida, on the other hand, was very witty and clever, and, and I wanted to show that, that uh, there were always wheels turning up there. So uh, her music is complex. The very first thing she sings in the opera, she's a young schoolgirl. The orchestra is playing in one and two and one and two and she sings one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. She's going against the, the brain. She's on a, a different plane from everybody else. Uh, and, and I like to show Frida and Diego interacting with each other. There are lots of ensembles in the mm -hmm. opera. There, there are very few arias where somebody just sits and sings. Um, I love the ensembles in which you can hear several people thinking at the same time. And somebody doing something to somebody else and somebody, somebody else watching somebody else. And, and all of it, the simultaneity, simultaneity of opera is, is enormously attractive to me. You, you can hear what everybody is thinking all the time rather than one after the other. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an opera in two acts. It's an opera in two acts. The first act is more narrative, and the whole thing is a narrative that goes through her life from her early school days to her death. But in the second act, the narrative slows down and concentrates more on her work. It goes inside to see the, the character development of Frida and it examines specific works of art and uh, goes inside 
For instance, there's a very famous picture of that figure to paint of herself as a wounded deer, her face on the, on the body of the deer, and there are arrows in in her. It's a very powerful image. Uh, that is in the opera as a ballet, and you see a dancer portraying a deer, and uh, the calaveras, the, the, the death figures who always run through the opera uh, to comfort Frida and to torment Frida. Mm -hmm. They come and they stick arrows in the deer, and uh, the trumpet and percussion give a very nasty sound as the arrow goes in. Mm -hmm. It goes in, and and it uh, shows quite quite graphically and um, I think sensuously the um, the ideas going through his mind, going into Frida's mind as she created that art. I was just thinking about that about the presence of both incredible vulnerability and incredible strength yes. uh, throughout Frida's life. Yes. How do you represent this in the music? Well, that's exactly what I'm referring to when I say mm -hmm. that uh, she's human and she's subject to pain. Uh, there's a saying, suffering, you know, pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. Everyone experiences pain, mm -hmm. but instead of just taking on the suffering, taking on the pain and, and uh, dealing with it, she used it constructively to create not only art on the page, but a personal identity. identity. She she chose her costumes to make herself a bigger than life figure. A persona. Uh, uh, I I think she won up Oscar Wilde. Uh, Oscar Wilde said he he put his genius into his life and his talent into his work. I th I th I think Frida put her genius into her life and to her work because the two became one. As a Mexican American composer, yeah. how Frida identity as a Mexican influence the music, and how is that your lens as a Mexican American possibly change the choice of the music in the opera? That's a good question. I wanted the music to be Mexican, mm -hmm. so I used some authentic Mexican folk tunes. Uh, Storinsky said. Great composers don't borrow, they steal. Uh, when I take something, I want to make it my, my own. Um, and I also created what uh, Faya called in his music, imaginary folk music. So I have music that I created that sounds just like authentic Mexican folk music. Someone, uh, in fact, uh, referred to the fact that I had quoted the famous Zapata hymn. There is no Zapata hymn. I made up a Zapata hymn. <laughs> Good. Uh, but, the, but the music is, is not just quotation. I, I made it my own. It's modern music, modern complex music. Uh, one of my favorite reviews from the production in Vienna said it sounded like a mariachi band that had been drinking tequila laced with mescaline. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think your opera brings to the table in terms of knowledge and understanding of the Hispanic woman and their challenging stereotypes and barriers like sexism, machismo and infidelity? One of my favorite quotations is from Jean Cocteau who said, People read books to see whether they are in them. We read to see what is of ourselves in, in, in what we read. And I think the same thing really applies to what people see on the stage. They want to see something of their own life, life experience on the stage. And so I think it's thrilling for a Latino audience to see 
their own hardships and, and their, their life experiences coming back to them on the stage. It, it, an artist holds up a mirror to society and, and says, this is you. And uh, it's exciting when an audience can come to the theater and see the Hikari that and just a celebration of, 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 of Mexican color, the, the, the colors of, of Mexican culture, the, the costumes, the images, the, uh, the, the fascination with death. Uh, the calaveras. You know, Frida, uh, if you go to her house in Coyacan, you see her bed in which there is a skeleton suspended over the bed. So every morning she woke up and literally would stare death in the face. And uh, as you, 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 you mentioned issues of infidelity, those, those aren't uh, restricted to Latin culture. I know. But, uh, but there, and there's, there's passion. Uh, Frida and Diego had a passion for each other, and they had a passion for the whole world of Mexican music, Mexican culture. They celebrated being Mexican. Uh, Diego began his career as a cubist in Paris, creating visual art that was uh, practically interchangeable with what Braque and Picasso were, were doing. And he decided to go home and become a Mexican. And, and, and he found himself. He found himself. He, f he created art for the people, the, the, the big murals that, that all could see, the magnificent murals uh, that I think can be compared to Michelangelo, to, to stand in, in front of, of a giant Michelangelo, uh, a giant Rivera mural is, is like standing in, in front of, a, of, of the Sistine Chapel. Uh, the magnificent, mighty things. And, and um, you, the audience, for his art, sees something bigger than themselves, something bigger than the artist that, that encompasses all of the people. Frida did the same thing with, <coughs> with the interior. She looked inside. <coughs> As it says in the opera, he paints. The big outside, I paint the secrets inside. Mm -hmm. When you create, you wrote the music of Frida, you didn't know or you were expecting they were so famous? Or became... Well, when I wrote the opera, Frida was already famous. Mm -hmm. She was already, you already saw her. We her, knew her. Her picture on billboards and, and, and she was a rallying figure for Latinos in general women um, artists in, in general, people with disabilities, people of, of the lesbian persuasion. Um, she encompassed all of these, and so everyone wants a piece of Frida. That, that was already in place. Um, but, and I think the opera has grown as her fame has grown. Um, it's wonderful to see it. Uh, this is the Cincinnati is the 16th city for for a, a production of Frida. Just last week, uh, we had a production in Long Beach, which was the 15th city. We were joking that Frida had her her quinceanera in 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 Long Beach. And now here in Cincinnati, she's a woman. Oh, okay. She's she's gone on to sixteen. When you, Maestro, what do you have learned from this sixteen, you know, operas about Frida that, and each one is different. Each one is different. That and that's an that's an amazing phenomenon. Over, over, in seeing the opera so many times, it's been done in San Francisco and Boston and and New York and Houston and Vienna and. Every production is different. Uh, in Guadalajara, there was a cast of 80. Mm -hmm. 
and in Long Beach there was a cast of six. So. And, 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 and so it obviously can be done many different ways. And uh, I always learn something from every production. Uh, people see things in it that I didn't know were there. Uh, people find un, un, unusual uh, layers in it. Because if, if a work of art is good, it has many layers. And it's something you can come back to. Uh, so many contemporary operas, there's a big premiere production and then you never hear of it again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very pleased that for 26 years the opera has, has been going strong. And it's, it's, it's finding a is finding a place in the repertoire. Have you seen the Cincinnati Opera? I was at a rehearsal last yes. night. It's, it's magnificent. Uh, the, pr the pr production originated with Michigan Opera Theater. Mm -hmm. and so it was given last year in Detroit. So I saw it there. And this is the same director, the same, the same two central the characters. Catalina is from Colombia, Colombia. Mm -hmm. and uh, the conductor two, from Uruguay. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So I like the the fact that the opera is also giving roles to Hispanic singers. I know, I'm, I'm it could be done by it. it uh, I think more than not, the perf the the performers were not Hispanic, but. Uh, it's nice to see it come home. It's true. Maestro, any new projects that you're working on right now? My next opera is going to be another Latin American theme. I want to write an opera based on the, uh, the, the novel by Amado, the, the, the Brazilian writer, Doña Flor and her two husbands. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, a very sexy, yeah. very sexy uh, opera with the Brazilian, the Brazilian equivalent of voodoo and magic and lots of sex. Uh, I, I remember seeing the movie. It's a wonderful movie, it's a movie with Sonia Raga. Sonia Raga, of course. And uh, so I think what the world needs is, is another Latin sex comedy. Yeah, I agree. Well, Maestro, any message for the community? I'm so honored that you gave me the opportunity to, to talk about I'm so glad to be, I'm, so, I'm so glad to be here. And uh, we can all come to the theater and and see our own culture on the stage. We can go to the opera and see ourselves. I think so. I am part of that and empowerment. I feel yes. I feel empowered that Cincinnati Opera is showing Frida, and I believe it's an opportunity to to see yourself there yes. because we have many struggles, but also we have the power of the woman, you know, Latina, Hispana. Yes, uh, uh, and all through the opera there is the idea that there is a force bigger than everyone else. That, uh, I think people have a need for what psychi psychologists call group arousal. People, religion and, and, and sports provide that, that, that kind of, of uniting. Uh, and I think Theater is the most powerful way to do it at all, and especially music, because music physically enters our bodies through our ears and 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 makes all of us vibrate. So, so there's something that that stirs our senses deeply. Uh, first, first the goosebumps, and then we see the intellect and and figure out what the the goosebumps are about. But the, the goosebumps come first. Well, Maestro, thank you so much. Thank you. I cannot wait to see Doña Flores y Dos Maridos. Yes. When is going to be? I don't know. I'm, I'm looking for a company to commission it. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, uh, there are many people interested. We'll see how it comes out. Well, thank you so much, Maestro. Thank you. I appreciate it. Glad thank to you. be here.